All right, what's up, fellas? Well, today is foam cannon day. So fun topic, yes, I know, but stay with me here. I got a pair of MTM PF22 foam cannons, and one of them, my wheels cannon, has been out of commission for a little while. Yes, the second foam cannon for wheels, super helpful, especially if you're lazy. I say efficient. So that one has been out of commission for a little while. It is, it's clogged. It's not pulling any product up from the bottle. Given that I'm gonna fix that today, which probably just means cleaning out the, you know, where the orifice is, uh, I went ahead and got a rebuild kit, which is the four O-rings that need to be replaced as well as the agitator, like the filter that goes in there. So I figure it's probably due for that kind of maintenance. Also the orifice itself. So we're gonna change out the orifice. I got a 1.5 millimeter orifice to be compatible with my active 2.3 pressure washer because the PF22 comes with a 1.25 millimeter orifice installed from the factory. You also get a 1.1. However, with the active 2.3, because it is a higher GPM, it needs a bigger orifice. So got the 1.5, we're gonna install that. What else? Wide mouth conversion. Right, so it seems a little excited about that, but it's exciting. So I found that uh, you can get the adapter in the bottle so you can use your same foam cannon, the same PF22.2, whatever, uh, foam cannon, but then use the wide mouth bottle so no more funnels, that's awesome. Uh, and then the last thing is a pair of foam cannon mounts on the wall from Obsessed Garage. So really looking forward to those, little bit of organization. Could I just leave them on the cart where I have been leaving them? Yes but they look, they're gonna look cool on the wall. So, come on. So here's our patient, my MTM PF22 foam cannon that I use for wheels. Now, the last time that I used it, it was clogged up. So in addition to everything that we're doing, the nozzle probably needs a little bit of cleaning. Now first, let's go over the parts. So we got a rebuild kit here, which comes with four O-rings or seal rings as they're called, and a new filter. Plus you get a new pin for the nozzle assembly. Next is a 1.5 millimeter orifice to replace the 1.25 millimeter factory installed orifice, which will keep the active 2.3 running at under 15 amps. Now, in terms of the foam quality, I already upgraded my other foam cannon with the 1.45 millimeter that came with the active. And you know what? I use it for the soap for the car and the wheels and for the brake buster. I think it works perfectly well. I think the foam quality is pretty good. So I don't really imagine that the 1.45 to the 1.5 is gonna make a huge difference in terms of that foam quality. Next, now this is a weighted filter for the suction hose, which helps keep the hose in the down position, it helps weigh it down so it stays in a better position in the bottle, but it also potentially filters out any contaminants that may have gotten in the bottle. Next, the wide mouth adapter and the new bottle. Now let's talk about this for a second. I love this because one, it means no more carefully threading the metal head of the foam cannon onto the plastic bottle. It would be easy to shred those threads if you don't, if you don't thread it on perfectly straight. And then once the foam cannon is threaded onto the adapter to get to the bottle, it's just a quarter turn to pull it off and then a quarter turn to lock it back in place. It's a much better process. And obviously the wide mouth bottle makes it a lot easier to pour product in, no more funnels, which is fantastic. And another thing I love about the bottle is the grip. Now this is kind of hard to see on camera, but if you look at the two bottles, right, they're both perfectly round. However, at the grip, right, at the, at the neck of the bottle, it's a little bit like an oval here. So when you hold it, you can clearly feel it's a little more comfortable in your hand. It's a subtle touch, but I really like that. And then finally, some wall mounts from Obsessed Garage. These come with quick disconnects. You can choose which style you want. I just went with the MTMs. They come pre-thread taped, so we can just install these, get these secured to a stud on the wall, and we got a place for our foam cannons. All right, now let's look at the tools that we're gonna use for this. It's a pretty basic setup, but I got a pair of needle nose pliers, some flathead screwdrivers, a 764th Allen key, a punch tool, which I believe is a 532nd, a couple of pick tools, 18 and 14 millimeter wrenches, some thread tape, and a ball peen hammer. All right, so first up, let's do the rebuild kit. So the first step is to remove the suction hose, and then we're gonna tap out the pin with a punch tool. Now, you can sometimes just press against a hard surface with either a punch tool or maybe the Allen key to pop the pin out, but this one's a little bit stubborn, so I'm just gonna hammer it out. All right, next we'll pull out the insert, which is this white plastic piece here. I'm using a pick tool. If it doesn't fall out, sometimes it does and it'll just drop out, but if not, if it's wedged in there, you can just use a pick tool, pull that out of place. Then from the front of the baffle, I'm using a pick tool or you can use a small screwdriver to push out the filter inside. Just give that a push and it should fall out the other end. Now I did this a little bit out of order for some reason, so don't mind the edit cuts, but next I'm removing the baffle which is the black piece here from the knob, which is the main gray piece. 
Now there are two tabs that you have to lift on either side of the baffle while applying forward pressure and then it'll separate. So just lift under those tabs, kind of go back and forth, get it enough to where they're, where they're out and then you can just pull that piece forward. All right, next I'm gonna push the adapter out of the knob by pushing from the outside, kind of like the same process from the filter. Now, if this little silver metal clip comes out, which apparently is also called a baffle, it's a slight pain to reinsert, but not really a big deal. I'm gonna do that later on the reassembly. Okay, so now we have access to three of our four seal rings. Next, I'm gonna remove the screw from the knob of the body. I'm gonna use a 7 64th Allen key to unscrew that. Then carefully lift up this little clip on the back here from the collar and slide that off. All right, next I'm gonna lift out the snap ring. Be careful with this. Mine went flying and luckily it bounced off the wall and then back in front of me, but that could have ended poorly with the Swiss tracks if it had fallen on the ground or it could have just gotten lost completely. So be careful with this one. Now to remove the shutter. Now you might be able just to unscrew this by hand, but mine was on pretty tight. So I used some pliers to loosen it up first and then you can unscrew it the rest of the way. And once that's out, you can see our last seal ring. Okay, now with all four sections here, I'm gonna use a pick tool, just go right down the line and replace the seal rings for each. Now once that's done, we'll reassemble in the reverse order, starting with the shutter. So I'm gonna screw that back into place and make sure it's snug. Next, I'm gonna snap the collar back on. You might need to press this tab down to make sure that it snaps back into place. All right, next is getting the snap ring back into place. Now, I had a little bit of trouble with this and it took a while to get it seated. You can kind of squeeze it to get it started on one side. And then I used a small flathead screwdriver to press down, kind of going around back and forth to finally get it back into place. All right, now put the knob back on top and reinstall the screw. Just make sure it's snug, that's good enough. Next, reinstalling the baffle clip back into the knob if yours came out. By the way, I feel like they're reusing names here. Anyway, again, you might not have to do this if yours didn't come out with the adapter, but I got mine back in by squeezing the ends a little bit and then using some pliers and my finger to try to align it into place, flat edges down. And then from the other side, I used a straight pick tool, um, or you can use the, you know, a, if you have a small flathead screwdriver to try to line it up into place. Ultimately, when it pushes all the way through, that's when you're good. The flat edges should come out and line up along with the flat plastic edges. Next, reinstall the adapter with the seal ring side down. Push that into place and then you can mostly use your finger and then like a flathead screwdriver or something to make sure it's fully seated. After that, we're gonna do the same thing with the new filter. Now, put the baffle back on the knob and make sure both clips snap into place. Next is the insert, that white plastic piece there. That goes into the body with a seal ring on the outside. Slide the baffle assembly onto the body and make sure it's fully seated. And finally tap the pin back into place. All right, hard part is done. Next up is the orifice. So I'm gonna use my 18 millimeter and 14 millimeter wrenches to remove the quick connect. The 18 millimeter really just gives you some leverage to use the 14 millimeter to loosen the threading. Then I'll use the flathead screwdriver to unscrew the orifice. So I'm gonna remove all the old thread tape here and then I have some steel wool, some shop towels and some all purpose cleaner to get out all the rust and gunk and everything like that that's built up here, both on the outside of the quick connect and then on the inside of the body housing. And once that's all cleaned up, next we can install the new orifice and tighten that snug with a flathead screwdriver. Next, time to get some thread tape and wrap around the threads here. So we're gonna go clockwise if you're looking at the thread straight on, about six to seven wraps should be good. And then finally, I will tighten that back into place, use the wrenches, really get it nice and snug. And the last steps are to install the weighted filter into the suction hose. So this just inserts at the bottom here. Push that into place at the end of the hose, pretty simple. Then thread the foam cannon body onto the wide mouth adapter. And that's it. I'm gonna transfer the remaining brake buster from my old bottle so we can test this out. And finally, the foam cannon mount. So I'm gonna get these set up above where I have my Mosmatic wand holder mounted. It's kind of out of the way. There's a stud that runs right up the center of the wall here, so it's nice and lined up. Perfect place to put these. All right, well, there you go. Worth it, I say. So let's go try this and actually make sure it works. Yeah. 
Foam Cannon's back in business. So, all right, well, there you go. Foam Cannon is rebuilt, upgraded, and they are on the wall now, so that's, that's pretty awesome. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're interested in any of this stuff, product links in the description below. Give the video a thumbs up. If you did like it, subscribe if you have not already, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. There you go. Only, you know, five times a charm. Thank you.